says that she loves me Isn't it lovely when the one who loves me is the one who loves me? Let me welcome the great Robert Sun. Hi. Hi, hi, Karen. Show. Thank you for having me. It's a- Listen, I am, first of all, um, I'm, I'm listening to a book called Lessons in Chemistry. And so I'm learning about chemical compounds and things like through the novel, right? She is just dropping things. And I'm like, through music, through art is how we can imagine. And, and you are teaching math in a way that makes it make sense. So before we get into first in math, first in math.com, um, walk us through your, your interest in math. What, what sparked it? So more than a half a century ago, I landed in this country as a nine-year-old immigrant from uh, Shanghai, China. And within a month, I found myself in a fifth grade classroom, struggling to learn a new language and being teased mercilessly by my peers. But shortly, the same kids who were teasing me started to come to me for help with math. And that was when I realized that math had power and the power of math transcends cultures. So I've been always a firm believer. You help a child build a solid foundation in math. It's the best vehicle you can give them to help them cross any kind of boundaries they may face. So I'm I'm reading Malcolm. I was reading Malcolm Gladwell. I used to assign that to all my students, the outlier. And it said in the outlier, because I used to say, you know, Chinese people are good at math, not because they're smarter at math, but because the language, because American, the American car crash of English you know, 21, 22, there's so many syllables in our numbers that our brain has a hard time. Like, you know, when we're calculating, we, we, we think the whole number, whereas in Chinese, I'm thinking Mandarin, it's like one syllable. Is that, is that true? Somebody that is true. From? And that yeah. does have some advantage, but the real reason uh, that so many children fear math here in the United States is they know they're unprepared. And the reason they're unprepared is they have not practiced. And the reason they haven't practiced is not because they are lazy. It's because they have not received immediate feedback to make that practice meaningful. Now, kids practice sports. They practice music because our physical senses give us that immediate feedback. So we're constantly learning. We're engaged. But we don't have that that feedback in mathematics. Um, So... Prior to the internet and a platform like First in Math, the only way a child could get immediate feedback was to work with another person who served that function. Teacher, parent, sibling, tutors, but live bodies are very expensive. But more importantly, anytime we have to perform in front of another, our mind gets anxious. We're worried about making mistakes, being judged, being criticized, and to avoid that discomfort, kids just didn't do it. Now, you don't have to speak math. So it's easy to hide your weaknesses. And most of the money in education goes into reading and language, because if I was the principal of a school and all the kids in my school were speaking broken English, it's pretty embarrassing. But math, you can hide your weakness until you're put on the spot. And culturally, we've developed a mechanism to deal with that. If anybody gets put on the spot and have to show their weakness in math, the immediate response is, oh, I can't even balance my checkbook. And they laugh it off and move on. And and this is the status of where we are. So my goal is to build uh, a fearlessness in mathematics. And you do that by allowing a child a platform for self-directed practice. Let me ask you this about that, because it's self-directed practice, because I think that like it's easy to do that with like reading because you can hand a kid a book. Right. Math is so active and sort of solitary. Right. How do you how do you actually start to talk to kids about adding like reading you talk to them about colors and and phonics and sounding things out it's a fun kind of back and forth call and response right how do you get to that level of sort of acculturating math as part of play or interaction at the parental level right so you know everybody thinks math is difficult but you know when i came here i spent say five years to learn a vocabulary about 4,000 English words to be proficient in English. In mathematics, we're spared of all that time. You don't have to know what the meaning of three is. You don't, you only have to know how can a three connect to a nine? How does it connect to a 27? So math is all about relationships. Where language will describe objects and ideas, it's math that tells you how they're all interconnected together. 
So if you want to get kids excited about math, you can't talk about it like you do with language. You have to describe to them the fascination of how things are related. And I was able to do that by presenting it through a game format. We have more than 300 digital games. Kids can get on play. There is uh, no judgment. You can, your freedom to, to make mistakes, you know, and, and this is what it takes for kids. Kids have solved more than 29 billion mathematics problems on our site since it was developed. So I, wow. I've proven that kids love to practice math. Just, you know, give them a forum where they, they're not judged, they're not penalized, there's no fear, and you really bring out the fascination of connections. And, How old and do you start? I'm sorry. We start at preschool. We have games that go down to preschool level. So uh, my goal is to build, you know, critical thinking, problem solving skills at a very young age. And kids are great at it. It's uh, and we have lots and lots of stories, hundreds. I, ha I have a third grade student in a title one school here in Bethlehem, PA. He's doing eighth grade work. He's mastered our whole algebra suite. And love all that, this was this. done self-directed, self-motivated. That child spent probably close to 800 hours on our site in the past year. Wow. Robert Sun, S-U-N, Robert Sun. You can follow him at Robert Sun 24. First in math at first in math, first in math dot com. So um, first of all, thank you. Um, I, I, I hear I can feel the anxiety bubble up. You know, uh, I know so many of us that that have anxiety around math, not being good at math, uh, but math, we, we are math, right? So like we, we have to lean into this and math is almost foundational for everything. And it's a universal language, right? Absolutely. So we should master it. We should master it. So what's the first thing you, you do with one of your games? Uh, the 24 game is Robert Sun's uh, website. Uh, it is 24 game.com. Give us give us some examples of what it looks like. So, so the 24 game was when when before the Internet came along, I launched it back in 1988. So it's been around for more than 30 years. Wow. A very simple concept. I put four numbers on a card and I say to you, don't worry about the answer. I'm going to give you the answer right away. The answer is always 24. What I want you to do is tell me how you think those four numbers can make that number 24. And you're allowed to use you know, all four operations, add, subtract, multiply. So the rules are very simple, but we have some combinations that are range from the easiest, which is you see four sixes, you add them up, you get 24. We have one combination that's racked the, the most brilliant minds around this country. So a simple concept, and yet there's a broad range of challenge. We ran tournaments. Uh, you know, I probably impacted about 10 million students. We had a nationwide tournament in South Africa. About a million kids were involved. And I view myself as an urban child. My, my formative years when I came here was spent on the streets of West Philadelphia. Um, uh, what I've noticed is that all children, but particularly urban children, they have a burning desire to prove themselves. But my mother couldn't afford to send me to swimming lessons and you know lacrosse and horseback riding. Um, so we did it in other ways. Um, but, you know, once you give students a vehicle to really shine, they, they latch onto it. We ran tournaments. For instance, we did a tournament in uh, the Philadelphia area. It was five counties, started with 150,000 children in schools, boiled down to about 120 at uh, Franklin Institute with uh, Mayor Rendell. And we've done this all over. The largest group of grand champions, the child that emerges at the final end, were black girls. The very demo that says that they're not. Come on. This is what I know about you. Robert's son is here. Uh, so you can get the you can get the physical game online when they go to first in math. Walk us through if, if you're a parent right now, you're listening. You have a child that is struggling in math. Robert's son, where where do they go? to, you know, the simple well, one, two, three. I, I have created a username password that I'm going to give to you that all your listeners can log on to First in Math and sample all 300 games. And we'll tell how much activity there is and how many people there are who love math. So you go on to www.firstinmath.com. That's the URL, firstinmath.com. You do the login for the user ID. You put Karen. And doesn't have to be capital, can be, you know, 
And for, for the password, you put it love math, one word, love math. You log on, you'll have access to all of our content. There's no cost, no charge. Um, oh, uh, let me, first of all, um, I love doing this program because it, first of all, introduces me to people like you. I was online. I saw you. I was like, yeah, I need, I need to, I need to have you on the show. I need to have you on the show. I, I need to break down all of the barriers, all of the ways in which we are told we are less than all of the ways in which we are told we can't do something. I need to, to figure it out. You figured it out. You have created the, you've broken the code, sir. Um, and to, to give this gift today, I didn't expect it. This is a gift y'all. Y'all don't even understand what this man just did it. And you, you don't know how you're about to get bombarded first. <laughs> you, you just gave away uh, a lot today on this show. Uh, username, Karen, password, love math, love math, love, love math. math. Um, I, and I'm in, so I'm going to be doing this. And this is the other thing, adults, some of y'all struggle with math. Some of you, you know, haven't figured it out uh, yourself and you're too embarrassed to, to uh, get in, in the game. This allows you to also pretend to play with your children <laughs> and learn, learn, <laughs> and math. learn, learn with them. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Robert Sun is here. 866-801-8255. Let's take a couple of calls. Jonathan is in New Jersey. Drew McCaskill is here as well. Welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. Hi. Karen, Drew, always a pleasure to listen to you on the radio. Um, Mr. Sun, I have to thank you. Uh, so Karen, you know, I went to MIT. I've been a math and science guy my entire life. My wife uh, is an engineer or was an engineer, so she was math and science as well. My kids grew up loving math. Uh, my son uh, taught himself how to do division when he was in first grade, right? We have been doing math with my son since he was in pre-K. Um, it got to the point where my son would be driving in the car and my son would want to make up, you know, make up math problems for him to do while we're driving in the car. It got so overwhelming. It was like, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And all of a sudden, the Franklin County Public School System put first in math into his classes. And my son loved that game. He used to play it all the time. He was the top student in his school in first in math. I want to say from first grade until maybe fourth grade. He was doing math two, two grade levels above where he was because he had the opportunity to do first in math. So I wow. have to thank you. As you know, Karen, I'm black. My, my son is black. My daughter is black. My daughter excels in math as well because of it. And I want to say, you know, the reason why so many of our kids struggle with math is the same reason why so many of our kids don't aspire to be doctors, lawyers, et cetera, right? Representation matters and presentation matters. If our kids are doing math and they come to us and we're not comfortable with math, we project that onto our children. And so they become uncomfortable with math. Um, if we are uncomfortable with math, we have to develop opportunities for our kids to find someone or somewhere where they can be comfortable with math so they can excel in math. And if we don't do that, we're going to raise more kids who are projecting their uncomfortability with math on their children, and the cycle will continue and continue, continue. Thank you, right. Mr. Sun. Uh, I mean, every person who's listening to this radio program to make sure they enroll their children into first in math and talk to your school board to make sure that your school has first in math programs for your kids to do. Well, thank you so much for sharing that story. It's wonderful. Yeah. That I couldn't make up that testimony. All right. So I'm in first in math, right? I'm logged in and it looks, uh, I'm confused. So you see there, <laughs> there are four. What, what do I do? All right. So, so now as a child, what you immediately do is you get in and start clicking around to see what would happen. Okay. So you see All four right, I'm gonna circles I'm going to click on there. Jenny's Jewels. I'm going to click on Jenny's Jewels because she looks, okay. Click on Jenny's Jewels. Okay. How and is this math? All right. So what you're looking for is patterns, OK, because yep. patterns is a language of mathematics and everybody thinks math is just numbers. But remember, I told you earlier what math will teach you is interconnections and how things are related. So you have circles there that are built of four jeweled icons that have an attribute. They are either the same shape, same color, different shape, different color. So kids are learning attributes. And you, you, you know, there's a couple of missing icons that are off to the side. You need to drag them in and build the, that missing wheel that has one of the four attributes. And as you go deeper into the game, 
there's going to be more and more missing icons. So the the rigor always ratchets up as as we confirm success. So mm. you'll never stay stagnant. How is this math? That that is pure math. That is math that's not language dependent. Okay, I, yeah. I think I might be good at this. I love I love shapes. Okay, I'm gonna do the 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 fingers that are in the piece. That sign. RPS chess game. That that's that's one of the most popular oh. games we have. This looks. Oh, I'm gonna have fun when I get off the air because yeah. I love I love puzzles and games, but I use I use words right. So I'm a wordle fanatic. I'm undefeated, by the way, because I'm really good with words. <laughs> but I, I like, but that's all patterns too. People don't realize, you know, that's patterns and replacements. And so mathematically, I feel like we we are very linear in society. You're either in this bucket or that bucket, but it requires all of your brain. You know, there's not math, science, English. It's all connected. And this is what you're telling us right now. I feel like it, Robert Son. Is this what you're telling us? Well, what I'm telling you is every person can be good at math, like any skill, but you have to spend time, you have to practice. And if you have a passion and love for it, you're going to put the time in. You know, you, you have beautiful ability to craft words and stories and because this is where your passion is and you focused your life around it. Um, the same thing can happen with math. There, there does not need to be any barrier related to mathematics. Is there the a part thing. of the get? Is there a part of the game too that like looks at money? Because I feel like that yes. like money yeah, game a, sometimes can be. So really we have interesting. a we have a measurement world that'll teach kids about money, how to identify bills, coins. There's a game that teach is them that how to make change. Pay? Is that equal pay? Equal pay, another very oh. popular game. Come equal on. pay. Yeah. That's the first Love one I this. went to. <laughs> I see you. I see you, Andrew. Let's take one more. Get one more call in. Michelle in Chicago wants to talk to Mr. Sun. Robert Sun is here. Firstinmath.com. He gave a gift today. Username Karen. Password Love Math. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Professor Hunter. How are you? Awesome. I just wanted to say thank you. I never knew who invented that game. But when I was a teacher, my son was in grammar school. He probably was about eight or nine. And we used to do the 24 game. Uh -huh. And he also participated in the championship games that they had in the city. Well, and I used to play the game with my kids. And I would never let them win. I always told them, you have to learn your math well enough to beat me. And uh -huh. some of them learned it. And we would kind of go at it. But they loved playing against me because as they got better at math, they started beating me, you know, they started coming equal with me and I really enjoyed it. And even today I will pull out my deck of 24 cards when I feel like my math is getting rusty. And I especially like the ones that had the fractions and, you know, the missing numbers. I love those. Right. So I just wanted to say thank you for inviting oh, well, that. Thank you for, for telling me the story. In fact, this, the first citywide tournament we we did was in the Chicago public schools. So, you know, thank you for sharing that. I love this. Man, I want you to come back semi-frequently. Um, first of all, the gift was amazing uh of this because I'm I'm actually I'm a game person and you know, Monopoly, you know, everything. This yeah. just takes it to another level. Playing games is how we learn a lot of things. You know, we don't get to go outside and do red light, green light, one, two, three, and mother may I and all of the other games, kickball and stuff anymore. Kids are locked in. At least we can start feeding their minds as well. This is amazing. So you know what I'd like to try with you, Karen? What? <laughs> We recently initiated something called the zip code challenge. Now you're, you're nationwide, right? I mean, they're listeners yes. all over the, which zip code in the nation that are your listeners. Do you think have the most fearless mathematicians, the most, I'm going to say it's Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say zero well, seven, well, you know zero one seven or one eight or okay, zero so you know seven, what I'm zero willing to five do? zero. I'm, yes. You know what I'm, I'm willing to do with you? is that we could run a zip code challenge on your show. And instead of putting in Karen for the user ID, you put in your own zip code. And anybody who uses that same zip code are adding to the number of math problems solved. And after a period of time, you can decide if it's a week, four weeks, whatever. I will tell you which zip code has solved the most math problems on first and math. Okay, so instead of putting in K A R E N, they put in their own zip code. Yeah, but I got to set what? it up first. So right now, okay, for sampling, okay. you'll do Karen. But if that's something you're interested in, I can talk with I you. I am about. interested in that. 
And oh, then I love you, that. You come back. So let's give people a chance to first play the play the games a little right. bit, right? So right. we're gonna give them a couple of weeks to do that. Let's come back mid July, start set up the zip code challenge, and then I'll give a prize to the. I can't give a prize to the entire zip code. We could do something though, Smith. Let's figure out what we give people who who win the zip yeah. code. Yeah, but maybe maybe we show up and do like um. Uh, you know, uh, maybe in person an math challenge or something. Yeah. No, we come and do an event and we show up and, and we get them a, a something, a certificate for being the best in math. Uh, let's first in math. Uh, all right, Robertson, challenge accepted. We'll okay. see you in a few weeks. All come right. back. We're going to set this up. All Thank right. you for coming through today. You Absolutely. are a joy. And a, Thank oh, you. Man. Thank you for having me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves thing is the one